SEP Fanfic Readings presents Thanks to the Photographs by Unstable Hufflepuff Chapter 2 A Malfoy Massage The fact that Hermione had been back for less than 24 hours and was already hiding out in the Hogwarts library was truly shameful. Creature, the house elf, who still worked in the kitchens, served her breakfast in her private living quarters so she wouldn't have to show her face to the rest of the staff after having a slight meltdown in front of them. She had never abused a house elf's eagerness to help like that, but her embarrassment far outweighed her guilt. She wondered if she'd used up all of that Gryffindor courage during the war. Still, she felt at ease the moment she stepped inside the library. It was like returning home after a long vacation. You enjoyed your time in a new place, but it was still good to be home. She even missed the smell of the place, which seemed a little weird. Madame Pence took one look at her from her spot at her desk, shook her head in exasperation, and then returned to the book she'd been reading. "'Yes, yes, I am predictable,' Hermione thought, rolling her eyes. She spent the better half of her morning exploring the library, reveling in the fact that, with the students gone for the summer, she had it all to herself. An hour had passed, during which she simply walked up and down the aisles, reacquainting herself with her favorite books, before finally settling down at her old table with Hogwarts A History.' She hadn't even opened the book before she was met with a horrifying sight. There, on her table, someone had engraved the words, Harry Potter Rules. She immediately withdrew her wand to get rid of it. They're kids, Granger. You can't stop them from writing on desks. Hermione raised her head and narrowed her eyes at Malfoy. He was leaning against a nearby shelf, eyeing her wand with amusement. She then realized it was pointed right at his face and set it down on the table with a sigh. They've damaged school property she mumbled. Malfoy leaned in, cupping a hand over his ear. What was that? She glared at him, and he smirked. I knew I'd find you here. Yes, Madame Pence didn't seem quite so surprised either, she said irritably, crossing her arms over her chest. She bounced her leg under the table. Apparently, I'm just about the most predictable person on the planet. Oh, I don't know about that, said Malfoy, sounding almost gleeful. He pulled out the chair across from her and sat down, smirking still. "'You've certainly surprised me in recent years. I know an awful lot of others feel the same.' Hermione scoffed, bouncing her leg even faster. "'Yes, yes, I, as Veronica so eloquently put it, fucked up my life, shocked the world and all that.' She paused, then found herself smirking. "'But you apparently fucked up your life, too. Even more so than you had already, if that's possible.' "'I take it you're referring to my Death Eater days,' said Malfoy casually. "'That's fair.' She arched an eyebrow at him. "'Well, I didn't fuck some muggle political figure's son, if that's what you're asking,' he said. But then he sighed, dropping the smirk. "'I got a divorce. The rest of Pure Blood Society didn't like that. My ex-wife remarried, so she's back in everyone's good graces. Me, on the other hand, not so much.' "'Ah, and that's why you've chosen to hide out here.' said Hermione knowingly. I can't say I blame you. I know what it's like to be looked down upon by people like that. Malfoy smiled grimly. I deserved that. Hmm? Oh, I wasn't referring to you. Though, I suppose you are included in that statement. I just meant that I got quite a lot of letters from some members of Pure Blood Society berating me for making a fool out of myself after they'd so kindly welcomed me into the wizarding world. I believe your ex-wife's mother was among them. It was Astoria Greengrass, correct? Astoria Pusey now, actually. Hermione thought for a moment, her mind returning back to her Hogwarts days. Adrian Pusey? she asked, and when he nodded in confirmation, she added, They're going to have some ridiculously good-looking children. Malfoy snickered. However, his amusement didn't last very long, because he then kicked her under the table, successfully uncrossing her legs. Would you quit that? You're shaking the table. She stared at him, mouth agape. Did you just kick me? Yes, and I'll do it again if you continue. Hey, that wasn't very ladylike. You kicked me first. Well, now you just sound like a child. Hermione swung her foot at him again, scowling. Only this time he reached down and caught her foot. He held it there while she glared at him. Are you quite finished? She continued to glare at him and swung her other foot in his direction. This backfired horribly. He scooted forward in his seat and grabbed the other foot and placed them both in his lap, gripping her ankles tightly to keep her from causing him further injury. Merlin, no wonder that hurt so much, he muttered, studying her shoes. 
These heels may be short, but they could kill a man. Have you worn them in case you run into the weasel again? Hermione scoffed, trying to yank her feet back from his grasp, but he only tightened his hold, smirking at her. If I happen to run into him, then I may do just that, she said hotly. Serves him right. Is this about the fact that he named his bastard child the same name you two picked out for whatever evil spawn you were hoping to bring into this world? asked Malfoy, and she frowned. Longbottom explained after your little temper tantrum last night. She huffed and nodded. Among other reasons, yes. Malfoy hummed in response and began removing her shoes, still grasping her ankles tight enough that she couldn't pull them back. "'I know your plan was likely to get away from it all,' he said. "'But have you really been living under a rock all this time? The birth of their child was announced in the Prophet.' "'I didn't let any of my friends tell me about him,' said Hermione quietly, her face going slightly pink as she watched him place her heels on the floor. "'Neville gave me a rundown on what I'd missed before dinner.' Better to hear it from him than anyone else, I suppose. And he neglected to mention the child's name. She nodded. Well, it wasn't very creative in the first place. I'd expect you to come up with a better name than that. Rose is a lovely name, thank you very— Are you rubbing my feet? Malfoy nodded, continuing to massage her heel. I honestly have no idea how to go about comforting a witch, he said. But Pansy used to make me rub her feet when she was pissed off— Thankfully, Theo's taken over that particular job now. Theo not? Yes. He and Pansy got married last spring. He hasn't knocked her up yet, though, thank Merlin. I don't think I could handle living alongside a carbon copy of Pansy Parkinson. Agreed, said Hermione, biting her lip. She was trying very hard to look like she was not enjoying this, but Malfoy was apparently an expert at giving foot rubs, and she'd already relaxed under her seat. He pressed his thumb against a particularly sore spot, and she let out a small moan before she could stop herself. He grinned. "'Where'd you run off to, anyway?' he asked, his eyes roaming her face. "'You're tan, so it's got to be someplace warm, but I honestly can't picture you living in the tropics.' "'I was in Venice,' she said, groaning a little, studying towards a mastery in transfiguration. "'Hmm. I thought you'd wind up teaching defense against the dark arts, if anything. Seems much more suitable.' Hermione frowned. "'That was actually the only class I didn't get an outstanding in, if you can believe it,' she said bitterly. "'And yet you went on to become a war heroine. Interesting.' "'You're the one teaching charms. Never saw that coming.' Malfoy shrugged, continuing to massage her feet and grinning every time she moaned in response. "'I've always been partial to charms work,' he said. "'It was my favorite class at Hogwarts. Always came easy to me.' Hermione nodded, closing her eyes. This was far too relaxing for her to keep up an expression of discomfort. "'Do you have a unicorn hair as your wand core, by any chance?' "'Why do you ask?' "'Those cores are known for being, oh, exceptional at charms.' She heard Malfoy chuckle. "'Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Why does that surprise you?' "'Not really, but I bet the eleven-year-old Draco Malfoy wasn't too pleased.' "'No, he really wasn't,' said Malfoy amusedly. I used to tell everyone I had a dragon heartstring call. Seemed much cooler. Hermione merely nodded in response. She was far too relaxed to speak. Her brain had practically turned to mush. She rested her head on the back of the chair, trying to focus on the pleasure rather than the fact that the wizarding world must have flipped upside down in her absence in order for Draco Malfoy to be giving her a foot massage right now. Oh, thank goodness! I knew I'd find you here! She opened her eyes to see Neville standing just behind Malfoy, just in time to see the mortified look on his face when he realized what he'd walked in on. Malfoy glanced over his shoulder at him, then began putting Hermione's shoes back on, chuckling to himself. "'What is it, Neville?' she asked, once he'd set her feet back down on the ground. "'Is something wrong?' "'I came to apologize,' said Neville heavily, apparently only able to find his voice when she didn't have Malfoy's hands on her. She couldn't blame him. "'I should have warned you about Rose. I just didn't want to upset you by twisting the knife.' "'It's fine,' said Hermione, sighing. "'I was going to find out eventually.' Neville nodded, but he still looked rather guilty about something. She gave him a questioning look. "'Harry and Ginny are in the entrance hall waiting for you.' Hermione dropped her head back, rubbing her temple. "'Right. Thank you,' she sighed and got to her feet. "'It'll be fine, Hermione,' said Neville gently. "'You know they love you. They've never cared about any of it.' She scoffed, and the sound caused Malfoy, who had also stood, to raise his brow. "'Does Molly know they're here?' 
she asked coldly, as the three of them made their way out of the library. "'I don't think so, no,' said Neville awkwardly. "'She's still not exactly your biggest fan.' "'Yes, because I'm the slag that broke her son's heart,' said Hermione, throwing open the door so aggressively that he had to jump out of the way, else he'd be hit. "'Tell me, how does she feel about Lavender these days?' She heard Neville gulp behind her. Apparently Malfoy did too, because she could also hear him snicker. "'Well, she wasn't exactly fond of her at first, but after Rose was born. "'I see. So her entire demeanor changed as soon as she was confronted with a grandchild. "'Well, I certainly see the appeal. God knows having children is the only respectable career for a woman.' "'Isn't her only daughter a chaser for the Hollyhead Harpies?' said Malfoy. "'All the more reason to love Lavender,' muttered Hermione darkly, as they turned onto the marble staircase." She could see Harry and Ginny standing at the bottom of it, and she immediately grinned. She raced down the steps, and, having caught the sight of her, Harry hurried to meet her halfway, taking her into his arms the second they reached each other. "'Oh, Harry, I've missed you so much!' "'Never do that again, Hermione,' he said sternly. Two years was far too long!' She giggled, but it sounded more like a whimper. Harry raised his head from her shoulder, and his shock was almost palpable. "'Malfoy? Porter?' "'No offense, but what the hell are you doing here?' "'Sightseeing.' "'He works here, Harry,' said Hermione, gasping for a little air. At the sight of Malfoy, Harry had squeezed her much too tightly. "'All right, chosen one, it's my turn,' snapped Ginny. "'You've hawked along enough.' Harry relented, only to stand there staring at Malfoy with a dumbfounded expression on his famous face. Ginny squeezed Hermione ten times as tight as he had. "'You teach here. How come I didn't know this?' "'If you run away again like that, I'm making Luna the godmother to our next child.' "'He just started here, Harry,' said Neville. "'He and Hermione both arrived yesterday.' "'Don't tell me you're pregnant again.' "'Longbottom's right,' said Malfoy. "'But I'll let you all catch up and be on my merry way. "'Later, Granger. Longbottom. Potters.' "'Bye, Malfoy. "'Good to see you, Ferret. "'As lovely as ever, Ginevra.' "'Finally, Ginny released Hermione and held her at arm's length, grinning broadly.' "'Don't worry,' she chortled. "'I'm currently not with child.' Hermione giggled. "'It's been years since I've heard you call him a ferret. "'It's been years since I've had the opportunity.' "'He's seriously teaching here,' said Harry, still utterly bewildered. "'At Hogwarts. With children. "'Was that even Malfoy or somebody who just looked like him?' "'Believe me, that was him,' said Hermione. "'But enough of that. Shall we grab some lunch? "'There should be food in the Great Hall.' "'Oh, no, no, no,' said Ginny, shaking her head. "'We're grabbing lunch in Hogsmeade.' Hermione felt the color drain from her face. "'We are?' "'Yes. I want a butt beer. And because of all that happy wife, happy life rubbish, Harry has agreed to help me drag you there.' She turned to give Harry a dark look. "'Sorry, but she's right,' he said, raising his hands in mock surrender. "'You've hidden out for long enough. You're coming to Hogsmeade whether you like it or not.' Hermione rolled her eyes. "'You coming, Nev?' asked Ginny. "'No, I've got to check on a few things in the greenhouse,' said Neville. "'But you three have fun.' "'Will do,' said Ginny brightly. And before Hermione could protest, she was being dragged down the rest of the steps and toward the big oak front doors. "'You're going to have to tell us everything, and I do mean everything. I love you, but your letters were downright boring. All you did was ask about James and Albus and tell us about your fucking studies.' Hermione shrugged. "'I didn't know what else to say.' "'Well, for starters, you look like a whole new witch. "'I don't think I've ever seen you willingly wear a dress before. "'It's hot in Venice. I had to adapt. "'You did so very well, if I do say so myself.' "'Harry chuckled, shaking his head on Hermione's other side. "'You do look good, Hermione.' "'Now, about that Adler bloke you were studying under,' said Ginny seriously, "'and Hermione couldn't help but groan. Every time I asked you about him, you neglected to give me an adequate response, which leads me to believe that there was something going on there. And don't even try to work your way out of this one, Hermione Granger, because I am not shutting up until I get some answers. She hasn't stopped talking about it, said Harry gravely. Please, for my sake, answer her. Ginny nodded vigorously. They had just stepped off the Hogwarts grounds, passing through the open gates. Hermione let out a long sigh. She had hoped she'd be able to avoid this question, but alas, Ginny was determined to get her way. Sometimes she wondered why she hadn't been sorted into Slytherin. "'Malcolm is a very nice man,' she began carefully, and Ginny's eyes lit right up. 
but we were never serious. Aha! I knew it! Hermione rolled her eyes. Her face was bound to get sore from how many times she had done this that morning. It was casual, and it never interfered with our work. Does that answer your question? One of them, said Ginny. But I'm going to need more details. Let's start with... She released Hermione's hand to hold up her own, setting them roughly seven inches apart, and wiggled her eyebrows suggestively. How big? Right. I give you full permission to not answer that one, said Harry uncomfortably. In fact, I beg you. He was perfectly satisfactory, and that is all I'll be saying on the matter, said Hermione. That wasn't much better. Ginny giggled with excitement and took Hermione's hand again just as they reached the quaint wizarding village. The effect their presence had on the place was instantaneous. People stopped in their tracks to stare at them. There were gasps and snickers, and one woman even steered her children in the opposite direction, shooting Hermione a scandalized look as she did so. "'Lovely,' she said sarcastically. "'I almost forgot why I'd even left.' "'Ignore them,' said Ginny wisely. "'I promise you that once you've gotten some alcohol in your system, "'it will feel like they're not even there.' They came to the front of the Three Broomsticks pub, and Harry opened the doors for them, smiling weakly. "'Think of it this way, Hermione,' he said. "'At least wizarding folk don't have access to the Internet.' Then he winced. "'Actually, I forgot to tell you. "'Remember how Dudley and I started talking again?' Oh, Merlin. Lunch with Harry and Ginny actually turned out to be quite lovely. Or at least that's what Hermione was trying to tell herself. The conversation flowed easily, as if she had not been away at all. But it was impossible to ignore the stares. It was a Tuesday in August, far from the busiest time of year. And yet those at the pub were making Hermione feel like she was being swallowed by a large crowd. She had no way of knowing who was staring because of the photographs they'd seen, and who was doing so because they were a muggle-born and had seen the real deal. Hearing that Dudley had found her online and mentioned to Harry that she looked like a friend of his was downright mortifying. She truly and deeply hoped Harry's cousin had not found that video of her for the purpose she feared he might. So, Mum hosted a party for my birthday last week at the Burrow, Jenny said, just as the three of them left the pub to start their trek back up to the castle. We figured it was the best time to tell everyone you were coming back, given that the whole family was there. Hermione inhaled sharply. And how did that go? Everyone was pretty shocked, said Harry. I think most of them were under the impression that you were never coming back. Wishful thinking, I suppose. Ron and Lavender kept looking at Rose in horror, said Ginny, rolling her eyes. Like they just realized you're going to be teaching their kid one day. They probably regretted getting pregnant again at that moment. You'd think Ron knows me well enough to know I wouldn't treat their daughter any differently, said Hermione in disappointment. However... I do plan on considering her nothing but your niece in order to survive it. I'd like you to know that I punched Ron in the face when he told me what they'd named her, said Harry proudly. It caused quite a scene in St. Mungo's. It's true, said Ginny, nodding. I've never seen Mum yell at Harry before. It was surprisingly cathartic. It was terrifying is what it was, said Harry. I thought she was going to try to convince you to divorce me. George managed to talk her down, though. All he has to do is give her the remember the time I had a twin speech and she caves like that. That's extremely fucked up, said Hermione aghast. Yes, but it works like a charm, and often in our favor, so I'm not going to complain. Anyway, Ginny added, just as they reached the front gates, you're going to have to come visit us at the new house soon. James and Albus miss their godmother. James probably doesn't even remember me, and Albus has never met me. All the more reason, said Ginny and she pulled Hermione into a tight embrace. "'It's good to have you back.' "'If Malfoy gives you any trouble, let us know,' said Harry, stealing her from his wife to give her a hug of his own. "'I'm not above punching him, too. In fact, it's been a while since I have. I'd love an excuse.' Hermione only laughed in response, gave him a final squeeze, and began making her way back up to the castle. Her second day back was proving to not be quite as bad as she imagined, though they had only just gone to Hogsmeade. Once it got out that she was home, she was bound to be faced with reporters again. She only hoped that the patrons of the Three Broomsticks had enough tact to keep the information to themselves. They didn't. The Daily Prophet the following morning featured an article announcing a new line of products for Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, and over half the article was talking about her and Ron's relationship. She had long quit her subscription to the paper, but at breakfast, Malfoy dropped into his seat next to her and handed her a copy. I hope Weasley is shitting himself right now, he said. Hermione picked up the paper to find the headline. 
WWW's New Products and Old Friends, with a subtitle, Hermione Granger Spotted in Hogsmeade. She didn't bother reading any further. From what Neville had told her, it wouldn't do her any good. It says exactly what you think it says, said Malfoy, as though he'd read her mind. He was serving himself a helping of scrambled eggs. I wouldn't bother reading it if I were you, but it's important to know at least some of what's being said about you, so you know what to expect. Are you speaking from experience? she asked innocently. Very funny. It was, actually, said Veronica Smith, dropping into the seat on Hermione's other side. The Weasleys had clearly given permission for their new line of products to be announced in The Prophet, but they were hardly mentioned at all. You're much more interesting than sickness-inducing sweets. Hermione didn't know what to say to that, so she began filling her plate in silence. Unfortunately, Veronica didn't seem to like silence. I wonder if your ex even knew you were back, she said thoughtfully. He's probably having a row with his wife about it right now. Merlin had loved to see that. I've met them a few times, and they only seem to fight when someone mentions you. It's like watching a soap opera. Have you heard of those? You must have. Do you know Sally Ann Parks? She was in your year. I dated her a while back, and she introduced me to them. They're my new obsession. Sadly, I can't watch them here. Downton Abbey is my favorite. Does she ever stop talking? Malfoy asked Neville. Before Neville could splutter a response, Veronica said, Sometimes, but don't hold your breath. Don't worry, you'll get used to me. Hermione glanced at Neville in time to see him mouth, You won't, to Malfoy. She smiled at the interaction. It was easy to ignore the paper in front of her, when she could find amusement in the fact that Draco Malfoy and Neville Longbottom were communicating in a somewhat friendly manner. The world really had flipped upside down in her absence.